Well, next in our series talking with MHKs, we have the speaker of the House of Keys as such, which is interesting, I say such, because it's an interesting situation for you, mm. for, for starters, because there you are, suddenly elevated this position, you're representing Russian, but of course, you can't do much in the House of Keys. You have to wait until Tim was. Is that how a fair yeah, it's, a, it's a really unusual one. Even amongst presiding officers around the Commonwealth, it's an unusual situation. If you look at um, John Burke in the House of Commons, he's not allowed to do anything. Um, he's not allowed to speak, he's not allowed to vote, he's just there to preside. And of course, he doesn't really have to stand for election either, which is a, a big, big difference. Um, whereas obviously here in the House of Keys, you're the presiding officer in the House of Keys, so you can't speak for legislation, you can't move legislation, you can't move amendments, which is a real frustration for someone who loves getting involved in, in legislation. But it doesn't mean that I can't influence things by asking questions, moving motions, and uh, uh, debating but things in Tinwald, which is obviously where a lot of the, the, yes. the other stuff happens. And you certainly put down a fair amount of questions. You and wanted this position, didn't you? You wanted to be speaker. I, I really do enjoy the, the role, and I thought that I'd be a square peg in a square hole, I have to say, um, mm. and, and it seems to be working out that way. I mean, one of the things I really enjoy personally is, is the history of Tinwald, um, and it's just, uh, we're steeped in it, the, the over a thousand years of continuous parliament. And so to be a, a little part of that, um, when I look up at my wall in my office there with all the former speakers back to uh, the early 1700s staring back at me, you're very much conscious that you're a part of that, that long, mode of history that we're, we're travelling down. If I was cruel, I'd say people like, you, you like dressing up, don't you? Because you, <laughs> if it's not like army outfits, you're always seen dressing in, in, in outfits. But, but, but actually, it's, it's about the role, and yeah. the, the role is a really important one constitutionally, and it takes somebody that, uh, that knows and understands the constitution to do it. And let's be honest, when we came back after the last election, there weren't an awful lot of people uh, who had that. Mm. And so, um, fortunately, it was something that I was interested in, in doing anyway. Well, let's, let's talk about the position. I mean, You've got this new house, which for certainly pretty well the whole year has been working, it seems, quite more officially than in the past. So it's, am I being fair? There's used to be long, long is a subjective term. But, yeah, but um, it, it, everything's a bit quicker. Uh, you know, people call it a love-in or something. But have, have you found it challenging to control these people or not? Has it been quite an easy sort of situation? Uh, no, I don't think it's been challenging to control um, in, in terms of managing the, the business of the house. Uh, that's been relatively straightforward. Um, Certainly one of the, the, the good things that we've done in this administration that hasn't been done in the past is actually give the members a really good induction programme so that they've been able to hit the ground running far more. And I appreciate what you're saying about it. I love it. I think there was a genuine um, desire to try and be more collegiate, to try well, and work half together. Of you, weren't they, of course? It's a massive yeah, it's the biggest turnover since 1976 in terms of uh, members. And, uh, so yeah. had that, that brings a big culture change to an organisation as well when you have half the members uh, turnover as well. And if you look back, I mean, there's really only Graeme Cudgeen and myself who have been there for 10 years. And we're used to, in the House of Keys, having people who have been there for 20 and 30 years. Um, and that's that's n normal yeah. in the Isle of Man. Um, in fact, it's normal in a lot of places. But so to have quite a, a relatively inexperienced house is something that um, we've got to both be proud of um, in terms of the changes it can bring and the changes to culture and the can-do attitude that it's brought and losing some of the yeah. emotional baggage. Yeah. Um, but also be wary about um, some of the, the side effects of doing things that maybe not have, have been yeah. thought all the way through. Has it changed much over this year then, as far as you've seen? Yeah, yes, the way the You've culture of the <coughs> of the place has changed quite dramatically, and yes, we have talked about shorter debates. I think that's about personalities, people getting their pun point over in a far more punchy manner, um, rather than. I the think more goes on behind the scenes before they get that far. <coughs> it's like let's sort this out. We'll go in there and we'll just. Yeah, there, there is, and yeah. um, certainly in the in the first few months, uh, you know, I held meetings in in the office to um, make sure that people understand what they're voting for, what, what, it, what it means, and what the, the impact of it is. Um, but they've told office members have grown in, in confidence, but it's still good to sort of have those conversations and okay. talk about what, what's going on, what that means, and some, in some cases, you know, what the historical context for some of these things is. Okay, um, and back, back to the point that you uh, mostly have to remove yourself from it. Have you mm. found it frustrating? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, of course it has. Um, um, if you look at my first term, um, you know, when I came in, I mean, the amount of amendments that I put down for legislation, I moved several private members' bills to try and reform things, and of course I can't do that now. Now, there's more than one way to skin a cat, and you know, I've been around the, the, the block a bit now to know how, how else to do things, but it is a bit of a frustration not to be able to, to okay. do that. But as I said, you have your moments in Timor, and you've certainly mm. uh, been active in that. Okay. What sort of year do you sum this up as? You know, you are a career politician already, really. I mean, I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, you well, tell me what you tell me what you mean, and okay, I'll see. Remind what... me, when did you go? You were the youngest member of the house. Two thousand six. Yeah. Okay. So you, eleven you're, years. Nearly. You're looking forward. You're going forward. You're, you, this is your 
presumably what you want to do next time as well and carry on. Well, I, mean, I don't know. Does that, does that not make you a career politician? Well, I don't know. One of the things that I, I really reflected on when the last House was sort of leaving last July um, was actually looking around the chamber at some of the individuals that were there. I thought, if I ever become part of the problem, rather than part of the solution, then just take me around the back and shoot me. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't honestly anticipate being there till I'm sort of 72. I think I've got plenty to give them. Yeah, the, but you've got your the prize sector. being uh, president, I suppose, at some point. I don't, I, to be honest, I don't know whether, I mean, there's, there's a whole load of Would career like options. It? There's a whole load of career options out there, aren't there? Because, I mean, Tony Bratton went yeah. from speaker to being chief minister. Um, others have, uh, Charlie Caruso stayed as speaker for 50 right. years. I don't see that as being a particular option. Would you like to option. be chief minister? And, uh, and um, Steve Rudin, of course, has gone, and many have gone from well, being which, speaker. Which one would you like? I don't know. I've got four years, <laughs> got four years to work out whether <laughs> I stay or go, <laughs> yeah, whether, whether I want this job or that job. You might like it. You like it. You like this sort of thing. I don't know. I certainly did think about it briefly going into the last election did I want to be chief minister mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure whether I, I certainly came to the view that I wasn't ready for it and I'm, that probably meant that a lot of other people weren't going to be ready for it either okay but and let's talk about that government and this government <coughs> there was that massive thing that you were you were sort of leading a coup over the, on the last one where yeah if I was, was so desperate field. to be chief minister then maybe I would have stood so maybe it sort of goes to show that it was an absolute pile of rubbish in the first place right Okay, so this government compared with that one, I mean, let's do, we, we do I the story thing. I mean, how would you give the government out of 10? I think instance? they've done really well. I think the government has set out its store, it's set out its plans, um, and it's been quite engaging in the way it's done that. Um, so I, I'd give them an 8 or 9 out of 10. I think they have done really well setting out their store. Right. I think we're now starting to creep into the sort of policy delivery phase. And this is where the danger comes in about some of the inexperience of some of the ministers, and they really need to, to listen to the officials about how to deliver policy because there is going to be a lot of bad news yeah. and there's a way of delivering that and there's a way of setting that. So some of the new out. ministers aren't quite on message or they're not listening to I, this? I, I, think it's, I think it's more about honing the skills um, of you know somehow coming out with the bad decisions, setting the context, um, giving the background, giving the options and saying this is what we think we need to do and then sort of taking that through with people. And that, I'm not silly enough to know that uh, to, to believe that everyone's going to suddenly think, oh yes, what a what a great idea and what mm. a good job everyone's doing, because these things are hard and there are a lot of options. But uh, so, but in terms of the planning stage, which is I think where we're at after a year in, um, I think the government's done well. It's now about implementation and delivery, and and they're the dangers that I think this administration okay. can potentially face. And what's your views on transparency of government? And I'm going to get to freedom of information. I think if we know where I'm going on this question. Do you believe it should be as open as people now can get information about your trip to Absolutely. the Falklands? I Absolutely, guess. and it's never been a secret. I mean, the, 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 the fact is that I think the Freedom of Information uh, request followed the fact that we published this information anyway. So I've got absolutely no problem with... You didn't like it, though, did you? You kind of had a bit of a swipe at the papers about the way they put it in. Well, I, I do think they have a bit of an attitude towards politicians in terms of they're always looking for the negative angle. That's, if that's what sells in the papers, then that's down to them. But, but you stand by paracetamol buying and all those sort of things that yeah, popped up in that. Yeah, I, I mean, that, for those who went on Facebook and read my version of, of events rather than the highly abbreviated um, version given by Alaman newspapers, I think they'll see... Um, you know, my justification for it. And it is a judgment call. There's no, sure. uh, there's no easy answers to it. And going back, I might well have done things differently. And that's that's part of learning. Okay, but the way forward now is is it this transparency that you know that yeah, absolutely. makes a difference to how it was? I mean, is it? No, I don't think it's the transparency that makes a difference to how it was. I think there's been a spirit of transparency. And now it's backed up by by more powers. Um, if you look at the amount of requests that were turned down under the old code of practice rather than the, the actual legislation, there were very few. So I don't think it's making a big difference like that. I think the, the real difference is in the culture of the place. That's, that's where we're seeing the real changes in Tinwald at the moment. And that's one I think will be positive for the next few years. I'm not sure you can answer this one because you have to be so sort of in the middle, but how do you think Howard Quayle's doing as, you know, as a leader? Can well, you answer that? Well, uh, Again, I, I'm going to be a, a, yeah. I don't really want to get drawn into any comment on any one member because as presiding officer, I do have exactly, to, to, to balance the interest between government and, um, you and backbenchers. So, yes, um, I will give you that pass if you want it. I, 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 I think I, that's what I'm going to have to uh, take a constitutional on. <laughs> okay. How do you rate yourself then? Out of 10? Um, yeah, I think this year, it's been a year of um, realigning myself. I mean, going from... Um, a, a job running a department and delivering in the department and um, sort of saving money, redesigning processes, you know, slimming it down um, and improving results, which I think, you know, as a team, we did that in, in the Department of Home Affairs, mm -hmm. um, you know, cut cost by 20 percent, cut, cut um, manpower by 13 percent and, deli and, delivered a, and delivered a crime level lower than 1970. So, yeah, but it um, seems to be 
numbers are going I, up again. I, 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 so we're still the safest place to live in Europe, um, and, and you know what you're talking about is, is sort of in the margins about. You know, sure, I, I'm not talking about but politicians going up. There's more. The, you know, you, oh, you right. cut everyone down. Now there seems to be head counts going up again. Now is that worry? Uh, well, so across government, that yeah. has, um, and that that is a worry because obviously that has implications in terms of public finances and things like that. Yeah. Um, and not part of my role as speaker, but another one that I have sought out um, is um, that chairmanship of the Public Accounts Committee, which has been a fascinating return to that area. I mean, I was in it in my first term, but obviously as, a, as an accountant... This is your, uh, back, your background, uh, isn't this, this? Is, this is, this is yeah. uh, bread and butter to me. So, we've, you know, we've taken on a, a big task in looking at um, the hospital. Um, that's our, our next inquiry going forward. It's going to be you know, quite a big task to look at it. It's £100 million worth of spending goes on at Nobles. Um, you know, how can we uh, recommend improvements in efficiency, effectiveness to, to something like that? It's not an, e an easy task, but you know, we've got to set yourself big goals if you want to make big changes. And, and back to the whole business about, actually, you, know, you still represent Russia, mm. but you are the speaker. Has that really made things trickier for you to deal with when people ring you up about no. something's, the, you know, something's blocked or something, you know, those sort of calls? No, I, I, I think in terms of um, representing Russia, having 10 years under your belt um, and knowing where things are, who to go and see, who, will, who know, you know si mm -hmm. the signposting element of it, um, that's really useful. Um, and so you, there's no uh, replacement for that. So in terms of getting constituency work done, you know, that's a lot quicker, a lot speedier, a lot more efficient than probably ever before. Um, yeah, there was a frustration about not being able to move legislation mm -hmm. uh, and only having you know, the ability to put questions down once a month. But compared to being a minister, that's actually <laughs> quite liberating, actually. And if you weren't the speaker, which department would you have liked to have been given? Because you would have been made, obviously, carried on being a minister, no doubt. Were, were you happy where you were or anything else? I, I, your... I really loved Home Affairs. I had a fantastic team, you know, with... with... Dressing up again. Well, um, well I, there's, no, there's, there's, no, there's no uniform for the Minister for Home Affairs. <laughs> no, but, really. But, but in terms of you know working with people like Gary Roberts, with Bob McComb, with yeah. Jane Quayle, with Kevin Groom, with Ian Young, and the, and, and the team around the Department of Home Affairs, I, you know that was a fantastic place to work, and I would have worked there for the rest of my life quite happily. But that's not where the challenge is for me, and it's not not always no. the best thing for an organisation. So five years there, um, and then moving on. So um, in terms of what else I could have done, I think I don't know. It's one of those things a bit speculative, and uh, I, I I don't know. I, I possibly could have ended up in Treasury, I don't know. Um, well, that would, again, would make sense with your background. So anyway, as we leave this, um, we'll see you down as either the Chief Minister or the, the President of the Timberwolves at some point, don't you think? If I stay in politics, I mean, that, that, as, I say, as I say, you've really got to answer that question in yourself, am I being useful? Mm -hmm. um, and I think perhaps some of my former colleagues didn't, weren't critical enough of themselves in, in asking that question. I, you know, so you know, if I get start getting that, that sort of feedback, then I, I, I think it's time to time to go on your terms <laughs> rather than uh, wait to be kicked out. Any more trips away with the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association? Yeah, um, uh, Miss Betterson and I are going to Bangladesh for the Commonwealth Parliamentary Conference, and um, where you get some more air miles in here, aren't we? Um, I have to say, it's going to be a, an, an interesting um, an interesting experience. But bear in mind that um, we'll be at an airport hotel for, um, for for a week or so. You're not trying to make us feel sorry for you. No, I, 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 what I'm what I'm trying to say is that this isn't uh, a week on a beach with a, with a, the odd meeting thrown in. This is going to be uh, back to back. In fact, I'm, I'm giving a talk to the small countries conference that's going on. So th this is about the Alamans place in the world. Um, and if we're going to be a nation state, if we're going to have that world's oldest parliament. We, we need to sort of sell ourselves abroad. Um, and we need to contribute to the, the, the improvement of others. And so it's not just a one-way thing where we go out there um, at the public's expense. We, we've you got can people see how the public perception see that. isn't that good when you constantly, constantly, you know, people are always going away on here and It always seems to be somewhere nice and sunny or interesting and it's not just, you know. It, it really isn't always somewhere. Um, the airport uh, hotel in uh, uh, Gatwick or something. Nice and sunny. But then again, if you're going to have an international conference, you've got to have it somewhere. Mm. And, and it was only a couple of years ago it was held have in Have you always London. been in favour of this or was just, you just love it because you No, I think things. one of the things I love about the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association is it's a fantastic educator for parliamentarians. So we have a regional meeting um, for, for our own area and then there's the, the international meeting. And we send two people off to the international meeting we send four to the regional meeting and it's a safe space yeah. for politicians to float ideas to try things out to see how it works in other jurisdictions in a way that you just can't do on the Isle of Man the thing is I know you, you everyone comes back and does reports to yeah. all the members but what still mystifies me is that, that there's no more contact like with 
when you come back from somewhere, mm. not doing an interview with the press, well, we not just me, but just you know, just say, well, we've done this and we've done that. And don't you think that would be? We more always do useful? a press release afterwards, and of course, yeah. it's up to it's up to the journalists if they want to follow up on okay. it. Okay, okay, um, I And well, I, 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 we, we I do. I know you bit, did that. I've we, never seen one, but there you well, go. Um, uh, you know. we, we always do a, a press release when we come back from okay. these things to sort of talk about, about what, what we do. Bringing back to the transparency Absolutely. side of things. Yeah, yeah. Why did you go? What was that about? Absolutely. You're not just done a phone call. And well, and a lot of it is is intangible, you know, and you don't know when the the impact of it's going to have effect. I mean, uh, for example, I've, I've met politicians from another, another jurisdiction, and then when I've had a constituency problem that has had an impact in another jurisdiction, um, been able to pick up the phone and say, Look, we met at the yeah. CPA conference. That, that's not... It's, it's a file of facts, anything of yeah, numbers. Yeah, but right it's, also, it's also actually paying big dividends for the Isle of Man, because we're becoming quite well known in the CPA as a go-to place with good practice. So we've got 120-odd... Um, um, members of the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Assembly coming through the Isle of Man at the expense of the British Council because we're a place to come and, and learn about good practice. Um, we have had the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association Secretary General coming. We've got people from the Falkland Islands to come and learn about okay, public okay, accounts. Okay, so, I think, so it's a two-way street, I think. And uh, you it, relax about the, you know, when you had five people disappear to Canada all in one go. Yeah. I mean, uh, but what, what, what de devastated but, the house. There's well, left. But, but what a great investment in their education okay. because they, these guys are now going to be thinking far more critically about parliamentary procedure, about how, how to approach the job. Loads of people come into the House of Keys with a good understanding about what they want to change in government, but not always a good idea about how to, how that works, how the systems work, and how to do the other parts of the job that they haven't perhaps been focused on when standing for election. The CPA is really good at that, and I think that you know long may it continue. But we also must must value parliamentary education, and I think if you don't invest in your politicians, it'll come back and bite you on the backside because they won't know what they're doing. We'll leave it at that. We'll come back next year and see how you've uh, progressed and if you're going to. Give me some more answers. All the answers you ever want, Paul.